nice if you can get a system that does policy-based encryption, meaning that you can set certain conditions to it to encrypt automatically. Again, uh, minimizing the workflow change. And it's also nice to be able to take that human error factor out of the equation too. Uh, digital sig signatures are uh, a further security measure, uh, including SSL that you can have in your email encryption. Um, adequate levels of encryption security. You know, I mentioned at the start that encryption is just scrambling data into code using a math problem. Well, whenever you hear about bits in encryption, that refers to how long that math problem or that string or that algorithm is. So the higher level of bits of encryption and the more advanced type of encryption are two things that you do want to take into account for. A lot of these acts do require that you meet a certain level of encryption. Now the products that I'm going to talk about next uh, all cover uh, the highest levels of encryption that you deal with. But as you're choosing a provider or you're choosing a solution, uh, make sure that it's not just plain old encryption that you want to make sure it's a high and advanced level of encryption. So again, the rule of thumb is the more bits, the better. And you want the ability to use uh, with email applications on mobile devices. Now, this can be uh, a little different, and um, you know all the solutions don't apply to mobile devices. Some, some of these things are just uh, workflow-related issues on whether it's going to work right on your mobile device or not. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't work on your mobile device. That's when uh, the, some workflow changes do come into effect, and that's going to be a reality of this. So some recommended solutions. Um, there's one out there called PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy, and they've been around for a long, long time. You can visit their website at pgp.com. Uh, they provide what they call cryptographic privacy and authentication. Um, they've got a very widespread user base. Uh, again, a lot of people have been using PGP with one or two computers at their businesses here and there for years and years in dealing with different financial institutions. Um, they've got all the range of products that we'll continue to talk about. Um, but they also uh, supply solutions for encrypting other products, not just email, such as hard drives or laptops. So if you've got personal health information that's, you know, on, that's on a laptop itself, you might consider uh, a way to protect that as well. Further increase the security and, and increase that peace of mind that your customers have in your security and, and keeping their information with your company. Zix is another um, in a, a very big as far as our industry goes. Um, they've got a broad adoption across the industry, including 30 different Blue Cross and Blue Shield institutions. Uh, they've got products covering all levels uh, of the encryption need. You can visit their website at zixcorp.com. Uh, we've got several clients running both solutions with uh, a good amount of success. So again, that's zixcorp.com or pgp.com for more information on those products specifically. So here's a simple illustration on the different types of email encryption that, that you can have. And this is where we'll, uh, we'll actually wrap things up because there's a lot, to, a lot to know about this and understand. And this is where we'll try to make you feel comfortable with email encryption. You can have email encryption on several different levels. Uh, you can have it right at the mail server or with this little box you can see right by the mail server called a policy engine. So what that means is um, that you can have uh, a box or an appliance installed in your network that will handle all the encryption for you. All the mail on the technical side actually goes through it and it's policy based like we mentioned before is one of the things you want to look for. So what that means is uh, if you're dealing with a solution like this you're, us you're usually taking a lot of the users um, interaction out of the picture. Depending on what recipient that you send to or uh, what whole business that you send to um, if it detects a uh, social security number in the body of the email, um, or you can even program it for certain keywords. Say you might use the word confidential as your trigger in the subject. And then in that case, the only workflow change that your users would have is to know that every time they're going to send an email with personal health information, they include the word confidential as the first word in the subject. Then the system is smart enough to see that or again read the social security number out of the body of the email and automatically encrypt that message. There are other solutions that um, don't have to take an effect for the whole network because the ones that do
cover your whole network are going to be more expensive because they do uh, they do take care of more people and they're more advanced. Uh, you can actually get versions and solutions that again a lot of people have had for a while that just goes right onto your individual computers. So if you've got one right on your individual computer, what you're usually going to find is just an extra button or a toolbar in Outlook that simply says uh, send or if it's send uh, if it's Zix it'll say send with Zix. If it's PGP, I believe it'll say send secured. So by simply clicking on those emails and then entering your passphrase, um, which is just the password used to scramble that email um, with some other stuff done in the background, that'll encrypt the email just by clicking the send secured or send with six button. So that is a little bit of a workflow challenge just because your users have to be trained very, very, very well on what kind of information that has to be encrypted because there's no middle of the road for these acts. You're, if you have to send email with personal health information or PHI, you have to encrypt it if you're falling under some of these uh, security acts that we've outlined. So again, there are pros and cons to both, uh, both solutions. The appliance, again, you take a lot of that user uh, interaction away. Um, but the local version, uh, it is less expensive, around you know, $150 a copy. Uh, that's going to cover your individual users. When it all comes down to it, though, you're going to have to uh, talk a lot in your business about what you're dealing with. You're going to have to train your people on how to do these things. Uh, you also have to train your recipients how to open the emails. Um, if you have a Zix appliance, for example, and you're dealing with another business that has a Zix appliance, they're actually smart enough to do the encrypting and, and decrypting automatically. So the person getting the email, the only way they'll even know that that was encrypted is down at the bottom. You'll see there's a little, a little tag that'll just say, uh, you know, secured with so-and-so. So the systems will automatically encrypt and decrypt if they're alike. But if they're not, and in most cases when you're sending information to clients, uh, they're not going to have this kind of solution. So they're going to see one of a couple of things. You know, they'll either get an email within it, like a web page attachment to open up, that they have to then, you know, register on this web page one time with the username and password that kind of sets them up, and then they unlock that with their password. If it's a, a bigger ver bigger edition or a hosted edition even, they'll be taken out to a website on the internet where they do that same thing on. They, they register and sign up and then just have a password. Some of the simpler solutions still just might be password based, but you also do, again, have to train your recipients on how to open these emails, not just your users how to send them. Okay, so those are the basics about email encryption. Um, we've tried to uh, simplify it because it really is that simple. The complex part of it, again, is just figuring out what you need to do uh, to make sure that you're encrypting the right information and that you're uh, training your people and your recipients appropriately how to, how to do that. So if there are any questions, please feel free to post them. Um, we also ask that uh, we'd love to see you attend our Take Your, next, Take Your Agency to the Next Level seminar coming up April 29th and 30th in Sterling Heights. Uh, we're going to cover a variety of topics, including uh, email encryption as one of them, I'm sure.